Hello, I'm Dr. Schufer, and I'm going to take a few moments to discuss the problems that snub nose or brachycephalic breeds have with respiration. Please sit back and enjoy the presentation. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have at the end of the slideshow. Let's start by familiarizing you with the normal structures involved in respiration. Most dogs tend to breathe through their noses unless they are excited or panting. Air enters the nose through the nostrils or nares. It moves through the nasal cavity past the nasal turbinates. The turbinates are bony structures that are covered with mucous membranes. These membranes serve to warm and humidify the air before it moves into the lungs. The air then passes over the soft palate in the back of the mouth or pharynx area and then passes through the larynx to enter the windpipe or trachea. From there it goes into the chest and splits into the main stem bronchi into the left and right lung lobes. Brachycephalic breeds have all the same structures as the normal dog. However, they have modifications of these structures which make breathing more difficult for these dogs. First, the nares or nostrils tend to be very narrow or stenotic. Trying to move air through a smaller opening requires a more forceful inspiration. The nasal turbinates of the brachycephalic dog are compacted into the short muzzle. This causes the air to become very turbulent as the dog breathes, which adds to the amount of work needed during the breath cycle. The soft palate in these breeds tends to be too long. The elongated soft palate can trap the epiglottis of the larynx, making it difficult to switch from nasal breathing to open mouth breathing. In addition, as the dog struggles to breathe, the soft palate can become quite swollen, further impeding the flow of air. Finally, the trachea of the brachycephalic breed tends to be about one-third smaller than the trachea of a similarly sized dog with a normal head shape. It's interesting to note that if you reduce the diameter of a tube by one half, you reduce the flow of air through that tube by a factor of four. So this small narrowing of the trachea makes a big difference in the amount of air the dogs To get a feeling for how these dogs must feel, imagine spending your life breathing through a straw. You have to work harder with each breath and there is a point at which you can't get enough air no matter how hard you breathe. Each altered component of the anatomy from the small nares, the compact turbinates, the elongated soft palate, and the narrow trachea contribute to make normal respiration a big job for these poor dogs. As the dog continues to work hard to breathe throughout its life, the cartilage of the larynx can get swollen to the point that the airway becomes even more narrow as shown in this picture here. Eventually, the negative pressure needed to breathe through these obstacles can cause the laryngeal saccules, which are small outpouchings in the normal larynx, to evert into the larynx and further obstruct respiration. Eventually, the larynx can e actually collapse, and at this point, respiration becomes nearly impossible and we are faced with an emergency situation. Over the years, the increased amount of work that the lungs have to do to move air can cause them to become stiff and less elastic, creating a condition known as chronic obstructive lung disease, or COPD. As you may know, dogs cool themselves primarily by panting. By moving hot air out of the lungs rapidly during panting, the dog can dissipate a lot of heat from the body. When a brachycephalic dog dries to pant, all the structures we've talked about tend to get swollen and they have an even harder time moving air. Their body temperatures can rise dramatically and send them into heat stroke. Therefore, we have to be very careful about exposing these dogs to hot environments. As a rule, in Southern California, they should be indoors most of the time and allowed out only in the early morning and late evening when it's cool. They should never be left in a car without the air conditioning running for their safety. Fortunately, there are some things that we can do to help these dogs improve their ability to breathe and hence their quality of life. With the advent of laser surgery, we have been able to revise some of the anatomic defects to improve airflow. This generally involves increasing the size of the nostrils and shortening the soft palate. Sometimes we'll re we will remove the tonsils and any everted laryngeal saccules that are present as well. The key to success with these surgeries is to do them early in the dog's life. We tend to do the surgery at the same time as sterilization, which is typically around four to six months of age. Early surgery reduces the long-term problems we've talked about, such as laryngeal collapse and COPD. We can help older dogs with surgery too, but we may not be able to reverse some of the chronic changes that have occurred from years of difficulty. Here is a picture of a dog who had nostril enlargement surgery one week prior. 
Notice how much bigger the opening is from the standard bulldog. Here are before and after pictures of an elongated palate surgery. Notice that there is almost no blood present because the laser cauterizes the blood vessel as it cuts. The beauty of these surgical procedures is that the results are almost instantly noticeable. The dogs typically go home with a substantial reduction in the amount of noise they make during breathing. Less snoring and improved exercise tolerance are typically seen within the first week after surgery. In addition to surgery, there are a few other things that you can do to help improve your pet's quality of life. These include keeping them trim. Many people tend to overfeed these dogs and the heavier they get, the more difficult respiration becomes. Use a body harness instead of a neck collar to avoid putting undue pressure on the trachea and larynx. And as we mentioned before, avoid any and all heat stresses. In conclusion, brachycephalic breeds have a genetic predisposition towards respiratory distress. The same features that make them so cute make them have to work much harder to breathe than a normal dog. Early surgical intervention and common sense management techniques can help maximize their quality of life. Thank you for listening to this presentation. The doctor will be short with you shortly to answer any questions that you may have.